And welcome everybody. It's two o'clock and I don't want to waste anybody's time. I'll get right to it. Today we are going to spend the next 30 minutes talking about the COHA staff experience. So thank you so much for joining us. And if this is your first open to everyone webinar series, welcome. We have been doing our webinars since Ooh, January of 2022, and we will continue. We have two more of 2022, and then GASP 2023. We will start in a whole nother set of them. We do both a COHA and Aspen webinar each month. So we'll go ahead and put that chat in, put it into the chat. More links to other topics we'll be covering in the next few months. And then you know, 2023, we'll have a whole new round of them. So thanks so much for joining us. And with that, I'll introduce myself. My name is Kelly McElligott, and I'm Library Accounts Coordinator with Bywater Solution, and I'm joined by Jesse Zaro. Well, that will be fun to edit. I do actually post these um at the end of the webinar. So you will be sent that recording without the error in it, of course, and it will seem just as seamless as it really is. So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen because this is really what you've come to see, not me talk about my necklace or, um, there we go, get this all the way on here. Perfect. So, for those who have never actually experienced the Koha staff interface, this is what it looks like. It has a little bit of customization, which we love to be able to show you that this itself can be customized to fit your library's needs. It is on a web browser. So Koha is a completely web-based software. It has been since 2000 and still going strong. We have two upgrades a year. Um, provided by the Koha community. And in the next release and a half, the next release coming, we're getting a new look to the staff interface, which um, for those who have seen it, this will be a great experience um, in the next few months to be able to, to see what the Koha community has put together. So again, this is web-based. You can use this on any internet browser, Google Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Edge, any computer that has an internet browser would actually, and a, you know, internet connected connection would be able to use Koha. It is mobile responsive as well. So if you are thinking, I have a book mobile, I have a bike mobile, um, I, there was a representative from a neighboring library at a bakery over the weekend doing library card signups and they were doing paper forms and I thought mm, if you had COA you could have a nice little iPad and they could do that registration for you how fantastic would that be um, so again the um, kind of the opportunities are endless when you do have the op opportunity to use a phone an iPad or a smaller device when necessary you can also use all the same functions that you use in your internet browser, such as forward and backwards, so using that back button, which has saved me numerous times. The, for, the refresh button, opening multiple tabs is also, I came from a very small public library and I was one of the technical services person. And when I covered circulation breaks, I would go out and still, catalog my books and just have a separate tab open. So I was available to help with reference interviews or checkouts or check-ins, but I also could still do my work. Oh my, imagine that. So I am a bit of a tab hoarder and you'll probably see that. I'll try to maintain my tab hoardishness during the webinar, but you never know. You never know what's going to get. So as I said, this screen is customizable. Over on the left is actually a free space. Um, by default, we'll have some Koha information on there. But in this case, we went ahead and added our Google Calendar. And this is a shared Google Calendar. So anyone who can log into the staff interface will see this Google Calendar. It's not something that your public will see. But in our case, this is where we're going to be conference wise. But, you know, if you had a meeting room and that was scheduled in your Google Calendar, you could put that in there. So all the staff knows what's going on in the meeting rooms throughout the month. You can also put any hyperlinks 
or um, one of the libraries I've seen has a comic of the week and they've added just a little image and the like a Calvin and Hobbes or a far side comic, which is always fun to see if you have somebody that wants to make a little um, game of it. <coughs> At the top right hand side, right above my browser bar, you can see and I'll move it over a little bit so you can see it because sometimes our heads are in the way. You can see who is logged in, the branch I'm logged in as, where I'm logged in at, and also this help button. As I said, Koha is web-based. So just like Koha, the manual is web-based. So it is an accessible manual right from the staff client. You're able to click it and find any information you are looking for. Screenshots, step-by-step -step directions are all included as a nice um, side table of contents and you can scroll throughout. A lot of these are hyperlinks. So it's great that you can go ahead and share information through those hyperlinks. Wherever I am in the Koha um, staff interface, when I click that manual, it's going to bring me right there. So I was in the serials module, clicking that help button, I can go, it will bring me right to that serials module. So I can imagine, you know, the first few times that I was in a new module, I could easily go ahead and say, what was I supposed to do? What's my next step? So you have that easy um, option there. This Koha button right here, my top left, if I click that, I'm going to go right back to the home page. And this is where I can see all the modules within Koha. Koha is also permission based. So what you're seeing on my screen today is you're going to see all the things that a what Koha calls a super librarian has access to. And that's good. So you can see all the modules. When a library migrates to Koha, you are going to assign your staff members different permissions. Your circulation staff may not have need or access to serials or maybe the acquisition module. So with that, when they log in, they are only going to see the modules they have access to. In addition to having access to all the modules from this main page, you also surprisingly would have all access to the modules up at the top because this top bar, if you can see it, it starts with circulation and moves over to the right, will stay with me throughout my time in Koha. It will be on every page, which allows me to easily go to any other module, such as if I wanna pop over to my tools module, I can go there. So it's actually saving me a click. I'm not having to go back to the main menu to find tools again. And really it just imagine it's just a way of what you're comfortable with. I can tell you that Koha is going to give you a couple different ways um, to do the same thing. And it's really fantastic to watch each person explore Koha and have their own kind of workflows throughout this process. Another easy way to get back to the home page, not hitting that Koha button, is I have this little here, this area, if you can see it, it says home and then tools. This is going to actually be a breadcrumb. So again, for new users, this is really helpful to know where I am and where I came from, but also giving me the opportunity to go one step back or one page back and find my way back home, which I can easily click there and I go back to my home page. Another thing that I really appreciate that Koha has done is given us this main search bar or what we consider our search bar, but let's call it a function bar really, because it's going to give me lots of functionality within each module in Koha. So as my cursor is blinking here, I'm in the checkout section. So main page, What's this library going to do? Circulate materials. So I can easily go ahead and scan a barcode or start typing in somebody's name. And I'm gonna be brought to that page of that person and start checking out and really just scanning. If I start typing in, of course, I don't have my scanner or library card here, my, my little temporary library in my office. As I start typing, I'm going to be given options and as drops down if there's more than one option, obviously there's only one Kelly really in the world that should be talked about today. Um, it's going to bring me right to that person's account. And you can see my cursor again is, scan is blinking right in the barcode area. So I could easily just start checking out. So think, scan barcode, start scanning the material. So it's a really kind of 
um, intuitive way of doing your checkout and check-in process. I'm gonna go back to the main page. What I also love about this search bar or the functionality bar, I guess I'm gonna rename this, is it gives me like a little clue. So it will say scan the barcode to check in. So I can easily, if I'm not doing checkouts and I'm doing check in, scan, 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 super easy there, renew, search patrons. If I wanted to get a more comprehensive look at the patron database, so maybe not gearing right to straight to a checkout, I'm checking to see if this person exists, or if I have more than one of these patrons that exist, I can go ahead and search the, the database before doing the checkout process. And that becomes a little bit different um, when I do this search patrons. I'm not brought to a checkout page, I'm brought to more of a kind of a list of all my patrons that start with that DO that I started to type. I'm a, I'm a details person. So I really like this page, first of all, because it gives me a lot of information. It gives me their card number, a little bit about them. You can see here with Calipi, I think that's how you say it, um, their address, their email. So I get a, information that is in the patron um, database. I'll get that information here. If I'm storing the date of birth, the category. So in Koha, you can have patron categories, which also work with your CERC rules. So you can see I have a library staff patron category, housebound, resident, my interlibrary loan, what library their um, permanent library is. And I am at the top, as I showed earlier, I'm logged in at the East branch. So the East branch is being highlighted in this grid that allows me to know that who my East Branch patrons are when they expire, if they have overdues and checkouts, fines, and any CERC notes. Two options here, the far right, and you'll find this throughout Koha is you will have actions on the right-hand side that allow you to edit, um, modify, those are the same words, but do other things there. I'm trying to think of one configure, but I also have the checkout button. So if I found the appropriate person, I could easily go ahead and check out right from here, bringing me back to that screen that I showed you where the cursor is popping into that um, checkout box. From this page and a lot of the other pages in Koha, you have a column setting, which allows me to, let's get rid of date of birth, manipulate the view I'm looking at. And this is just a temporary way to, to manipulate it. If I had a lot of information, again, details, details, and I wanna just look at something really specific, I can adjust my view. Um, I know my eyes get a little crazy by the end of the day and I'm like, I'm just looking for one piece of information. I could certainly refine that and be able to pinpoint that a little bit easily. I can also export or print. So remember, we're on a web base, so we can print any of the pages that we're seeing. And that's really helpful if I needed somebody to do a little task and it had to do with what I was seeing on the page itself, which I really like. Also from this page, I have not lost my functionality bar at the top, so I can easily pop over there. I have a couple more options right here, which allow me to create a new patron. No, this person, person doesn't exist with the barcode they gave me. I've searched their name now, and now I'm going to have to go ahead and create them a patron account, which I have that option right there. On the far left, I also, and this you'll find very consistently in Koha, you'll be able to search for patrons in this way. So I wanted to look for a specific um, email address, date of birth, some borrower number. I could go ahead and search there. I could easily just say, well, I want to look at all my interlibrary loan patrons within the database. Again, if you notice, that column adjustment that I created is still pertained. I've taken away the date of birth because I don't ever want to know what, maybe I do want to know when the libraries were created, but um, not necessarily. So again, those column settings have been retained for me. I'm going to go back to the Koha main page because you know, in 30 minutes, there's only so many things I can show you. So I'm going to try to do it, do them all. We have in Koha 
two searches that would allow, well, actually, let me come back. We have three searches that can go ahead and search the catalog. We have this top functionality bar that I can go ahead and type anything I want, barcode, ISBN, and it's going to search the database. If I'm looking for a specific term or phrase, I can use the options here in this drop down menu. I also have both an item search and an advanced search. Looking at the advanced search allows me to add multiple search terms. So if I know that, you know, whew, John Grisham has written a lot of books, but I want to look for John Grisham audiobooks, I can go ahead and add that in my advanced search using that as a keyword and an audiobook. I could also look for an author and an audiobook. So it gives me that option. I could also do a keyword because, of course, you know that fantastic book. Um, it by Stephen King, if I thought, oh, it's never going to find it because I'm going to have so many options, I could always go ahead and add the title and the author. But of course, if we did have that cataloged, it would come up because of the relevancy in Koha is going to push up those results found in those major fields such as title. Of course, you are going to get a lot of other things in those results, but you would be able to find those um, top results for that title, the help is another good one, um, where you know that those words are very common. However, COA is going to look at those search results and find those in the, the uh, title field together. So the and help together, not necessarily those two words outside of the, um, in different areas. Within the advanced search, if you ignored the top half, you could limit just by an item type which are going to drive your circulation, how long things circulate for. Shelving location, so in your library, how are things organized? Do you have a reading room? Do you have a basement? Do you have a garden atrium or a shed like a, um, oh, I don't think I have a shed. Oh yeah, there's my garden shed. So this could be really customized to what is in your library. Also, we could organize by collection. My greatest, um, uh, search in collection is always graphic novels because in my library we had them all over. We had kids graphic novels, we had kids nonfiction graphic novels, we had adult graphic novels, we had adult nonfiction graph graphic novels. So I had a collection of graphic novels. A patron could search all of them regardless of where they lived in my library. You could search by year of publication, more subtype limits, what's available what's available at a specific library or group of libraries. So in your library, if you had a couple different libraries that came together as a group and shared a lot of information um, and worked together, you could go ahead and say, I'm gonna search that, in this case, the Southwest region. And I could sort a different way. So if I wanted to sort, not necessarily by relevancy, as I was just talking about with Stephen King, it and the help, I could say, show me, the newest items, show me authors A to Z, and so on and so forth. The other search, which, you know, I think it was just coming out when I started using Koha way back over 10 years ago, is this item search. And it's really kind of blown up, which allows a librarian, whether you're working in the circulation of serials, acquisitions, cataloger, to really go ahead and run a report that looks at everything in the system, including those mark fields, and gives it to you in a way that is going to be helpful in a batch performance um, or in some sort of project, creating a list within Koha. So if I just go ahead and say, well, let's look at everything in my East Branch and a book, um, and with maybe um, less than ooh, three checkouts. I get a completely different view of my search results, but I'm getting a lot of information. All of these, as you can see, and I didn't mention this before, everything that's kind of blue is hyperlinked. So I could go ahead and actually go do that other, other win view, click it. There's my first tab, oh, my fourth tab actually of the day. And I can see the bibliographic record and the information attached to it. So the mark record and then the physical holdings within my system. Again, 
how great is it that I just went ahead and opened it in a new tab? I haven't lost my search. I'm able to easily come back here and see it. As I said earlier, that right hand side of my screen are my action buttons in a lot of times. So you can see I have the option to edit the item or edit the record, which is fantastic. I don't need to pop over to the record and then look at it and then edit. I can go right and edit that record right from where I'm sitting and never move a beat. This is one of the um, ways you can catalog and edit a cataloged record within the system. This is what's called your advanced editor. And I can go ahead and add, remove, take away um, anything that I need to. If I found a spelling error, which kind of happens a lot, you can see I have some shortcuts. So if for those using OCLC, this is gonna look very familiar to you. I'm not sure if in OCLC you can, but in Kohai, you can redefine those shortcuts. So if there is a process that you're very attached to and you want to be able to say, actually, instead of this um, alt C adding the copyright symbol, maybe I wanted to make it at a control C and I can do that instead. So you're able to change those keyboard shortcuts in Koha itself. Because it's a web-based browser, I can go ahead and just do that back button and go ahead and make that search again. So it's pretty fantastic, the opportunities here. I never closed that other one and no one even put up a stink right there that I had multiple tabs going. But you can see from this record, I didn't edit. I just clicked the title and I'm able to see the mark record the holdings of it, and then I can get really into the weeds if I wanted to and see all the other information I can, I have access to. I can see a full mark preview here. I can see a mark preview from this button, and I could edit the record there as well. I have the holdings view here. I can easily do a lot of actions without leaving this page. I can edit the item. I can go ahead and print the label. So if I noticed it came in kind of torn up, I could go ahead and print that label again. I have some options here that allow me to see a bit about more about the mark record. So this is everything in the 5XX. If this item was ordered through the acquisition module, I could see that all modules in Koha come Free. So once you are on Koha, you have access to all the modules and you can pick and choose what you want to be able to use in your library. You can see I don't have a cover image for this um, title. I could go ahead and upload one, grab it, take a picture of it. I just found out the other day that Colleen Hoover self-published her first book. So maybe when you cataloged that book that first time, you didn't have a cover image because it wasn't available in many places. You could go ahead and just take a picture of that. Or if you wanted to um, catalog some of your uh, more specific to your library or library archives, you could do that as well. From this page, I said the actions were going to be on the right. We also have actions on the left. We're going to get tabs here and in the patron um, page, which allow me to see specific item information here, set something to lost, damage withdrawn. I can see any holds on this item. Let me go ahead and place a hold for myself, get a little bit of the whole details. You can see I have a lot of options and want to pause right here for a second. I pretty much have everything turned on. <laughs> so there are a lot of customizations that can be done on your Koha system where you say, maybe you don't want to have a, um, you know, hold starts on a specific date. You can remove that option. Everything you see here is generally customizable. I can say there's probably over 800 system preferences that you can turn on and, and customize the Koha to fit your library's needs. So don't think that you have to change your workflows or your specifically your library policies to go on Koha. We're able to do a lot of customization. And that's the important part in thinking about doing a change such as this. It is a large change. And what we want you to feel most comfortable with as you move to Koha or think about 
migrating to Koha is that throughout this entire process, your library is going to make those decisions to say, I don't really like the background of this staff client. I want it pink. That's customizable as well. Um, you know, I want a different font in my advanced editor. That's customizable as well. I'm very hard of see, like seeing, and I would, we were just in a Zoom, you can make this larger. So for the staff that think, oh, this might be a little too small, again, it is a web-based browser. So there is a lot that goes into a migration to Koha that allows you and your staff to make those decisions. And if you decide to make a decision such as allow patrons to make purchase suggestions or not allow them to make purchase suggestions, and then, and then three months you say, actually, I think it would be a better idea. Let's get rid of all this paper that's cluttering our desk. You can easily turn that on without any intervention by Bywater. It is a you know, a permission to be able to set system preferences and something that you will learn all those tips and tricks on the um, kind of the big picture configuration of Koha system. So while I, you know, yammering on about the most probably important parts of Koha or to me, like just the circulation, because I know, and patrons and searching, I know that's really strong and that's what you need to feel comfortable with throughout um, working with patrons. You just certainly don't want to feel uncomfortable doing something in a, in a system and also trying to deal with the, the public. But um, I didn't get very far in the rest of the Koha staff plan, but what I do want to show you as I talk about it is the the Koha administration, just to show you, you know, some of the things that exist for your for your library. Um, those global system preferences live here. If I once I click there, you'll see lots of them. We'll go there in a second. You set up your library. You can create another branch. You know, I talked about a bike mobile, a book mobile. That's absolutely free with Koha. You can create as many branches as you want. One of the branches that I see the most for maybe a consortium would be a technical services branch. So not a branch that does much other than, you know, circle circulation wise, but is important for workflow for cataloging in a larger consortiums. You can create your own item types. You saw that my item types had little icons. You can choose one of the icons that come with Koha. There's about, I want to say 70 options and kind of organized by um, look of it, but you can also, up, you know, upload your own. So you can see I have different looks and feels of them, or I can go ahead and this is not my favorite one. I'm just going to say, maybe we should make this one not actually exist anymore, or you can go ahead and upload your own remote image. Patron categories, you can go ahead and create as many patron categories as you want. The sky is the limit. I mean, I guess I could say patron categories and item types go along with your circulation rules. So the more you have of those, the more circula circulation rules you have to set. But it's still super fun to be able to look at what you have now and say, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if we combined these two patron categories because they're pretty much identical and that would limit the um, need for too much configuration. And then I'll pop over to the system preferences, which let me tell you is, it has grown bounds and leaps in the past few years because, you know, Koha is built by librarians for librarians. So with each upgrade, there are two per year, you're gonna get more features and enhancements and upgrades to the existing Koha system. Way back when, a system preference would never link to another system preference. Do you see this? This is fantastic. So I'm learning as I go, hey, if I turn this on, I also need to turn on use cash registers. So probably a librarian out there said, I turned this on and I had no idea I had to turn something else on. Wouldn't it be good? Or it said I had to, but it didn't easily link it. Um, how many times have we said, wouldn't it be great if Google or our iPhone did something? In the Koha open source community, you have a voice to say, I would love to see Koha do this. It can't quite make a cup of coffee for you, but a lot of other things it has more capability of doing in this kind of like UX version of it. I encourage everyone who has never played with the Koha um, system, there is a test site on our website. I'm going to pop over there because I think I'm a hands-on learner and I'm sure there's at least 
one or two else out there in the room that believe in doing it themselves or playing around with it. So if you go to our website, bywatersolutions.com, you scroll down to the bottom, you will have access to both the Koha OPAC and the staff client. You can see the username and password is right are right there. And you can log in and play around as much as you want. It is refreshed every couple of hours. So whatever you choose to turn on, it will go away. If you come back the next day, it will be gone. But it's a good way to really play around with it. Um, maybe import a file of records if you feel comfortable or just play around. It's, it's, it's actually kind of fun. I'm going to pop over to the um, other webinars that we will be having um, next month, as I alluded to in the beginning. I said we had both a um, Koha and Aspen webinars coming. Let's see. Circulation is next month, right before Thanksgiving. And then we're going to talk about um, more administration. So I alluded to both those topics in today's topic. I'm luring you back to learn more for next month and talk about these different areas that we are going to cover. And for anyone who is interested in Aspen or has no idea what I'm talking about when I say that word, Aspen, this is a discovery layer within um, the open source community and we support them as well. They also have some Aspen discovery webinars. Their October webinar has already passed, but in November, they are going to talk about digital marketing. So it's a great way to kind of see that new discovery layer. Probably that's a good buzzword that's going around in the library communities. We were just at the Iowa Library Conference, and um, boy, did people get a kick out of seeing that um, functionality. So maybe something to come attend to. Whew. Do I have any questions, Jesse? Yeah, there was quite a few. Um, some that came up were about um, embedding other things beside a calendar on the staff interface. And um, I said, absolutely. We shared a link to um, instructions on how to do that. Um, a way to adjust columns, you know, is that statewide, system wide, or for just individual users? And of course, system wide, and also shared a blog post that we have on that. Perfect, perfect. Uh, we had a question about bulk importing patrons and or patron lists. Um, so talked about the tools module and again, shared another uh, link to a blog post that we have. Um, and then also creating lists for uh, patrons, let's say for James Patterson, a series, for example, Alex Cross, sharing a list, either private or public lists. Um, and then can the advanced editor be set per cataloger or is it set for all catalogers? Which is a great question. There is a system preference to turn it on, but there is a permission that you can set um, that allows you to use the advanced cataloging editor. It does require that you have permission to edit the catalog um, for the advanced editor. And within the advanced editor, you can have public macros that you can share within your library system or private macros, which can be specific to your login. So yeah, there's a lot of customization per user and per library. Wow, that's fan that's fantastic. I'm I'm glad people's minds are just kind of whirling around and thinking about the different ways that Koha can be used. Yep. And as always, for our partners out there watching, feel free to submit a ticket if there's something that you saw today that you have questions about, um, and we'd be happy to uh, answer those questions. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for joining us. We hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.